Hi everyone! Today we're going to be making a super cute jelly bean scarf. I thought it would be a really great time to make a video tutorial for this. Those of you who follow my blog, blog.tomichan.com, will probably recognize this project from a few years ago. I did write this free pattern for the Michaels Stores website maybe back in 2014 or so. Now the pattern is free on my blog, but since Easter is coming up, people are finding the pattern and they have asked a couple questions. I thought that the pattern was super easy. It's really only five rounds of half double crochet for each jelly bean, but there seems to be a speed bump that people are running into. So it's like, hey, well the easiest way to explain this is to make a video tutorial. And again, this pattern is a couple years old. So I was like looking at the pattern and like, why did I do that? Like, why did I write the pattern that way? I might've done it a little bit differently if I'd written it today, but I decided to not edit the pattern. Like I fixed an error in it. I think there was a weird mess up in round five, but that's fixed now. And I just decided to leave it as it is since a lot of people have worked it up already and they love the pattern and they said don't change it just make a video tutorial for the old pattern so that's what I'm doing. The other really cool thing about this pattern is that it's an awesome stash buster. I did not calculate the yardage per jelly bean for this but it's really probably going to be like 10 to 15 yards. I would suggest if you can using the same brand and yarn line in different colors for the whole scarf just so you know that your jelly beans are probably going to end up the same size. So like if you use a combination of Red Heart Super Saver and also Lion Brand Vanna's Choice which are both worsted weights, Red Heart Super Saver is a bit heavier, a bit thicker so those jelly beans will probably turn out bigger than your Vanna's Choice jelly beans. And if you don't really care, no big deal. But if you care, like I kind of care, I like that consistency, um, I would stick to the same brand and yarn line. Most of these jelly beans are Knit Picks Brava Worsted, and I believe this is a yarn you can mostly only get online at knitpicks.com. But I really like it. I think it's well-priced for the quality. It's 100% acrylic, again, worsted weight. It comes in a really beautiful variety of colors. Not all of this is Knit Picks Bravo Worsted though. I believe this purple is, it's a Plymouth yarn. Great, now I can't remember. It's made by Plymouth and it's their 100% worsted weight acrylic. Also this green is also Plymouth, which is very similar to Deborah Norville, which you can get sometimes at Joann's. So I did mix up my brands a little bit. Just watch your gauge basically. And Things should turn out all right. This particular scarf to fit me is 12, 14, so this is 15 jelly beans. And I'm like 5'3", five, 5'4". Five, and I'll show you how it fits on me when I wear it. So if you're taller or shorter or you're making this for someone younger, um, it's really easy to adjust the length simply by adding or subtracting jelly beans. So this is, it's a little bit long. I could probably, I could go with a 14 <laughs> jelly bean scarf. All you're gonna need for the scarf is a bunch of worsted weight yarn in different colors. I am using an eye hook for this project, your handy dandy scissors, and not that you need to look at it, but a tapestry needle to even all your ends. Before we get started, I do normally start my video tutorials with like a vlog slash video update about the crochet news that's happening in my life. And I know that's probably not interesting to everyone and a lot of you are just here to get into the tutorial. So I'm curious if you guys think I should keep doing that or if you guys just want to be like, hey, here we are. This is the project, let's get to it, because I totally respect that as well. That's what we're here for. Just let me know. I started doing that because I thought it was kind of a cool combination of vlog and tutorial smashed together. But if it's not relevant or interesting to people, then I don't have to do it. I have my blog to keep up with all my crochet news too. So let me know. I'm always open to your guys' feedback and providing the content that you guys want to see. So I think that's it. We're ready to dive into the tutorial and let's get started. I'm starting with my eye hook. You could also work with an H hook if you like the feel of that better. I just wanted to keep my work a little bit more loose 
for this project, so I picked the eye hook. And this is Knit Picks Brava Worsted in the color Cornflower. What I'm going to do is make sure I have maybe an 8 to 10 inch tail to work with. Um, sometimes I feel like this project works up <clears throat> a little holy in the beginning. And uh, like here's a jelly bean. And sometimes I feel like in the center, like here and here, there might be a hole or two that I want to tighten up a little bit. So it's easier to do that if I have some yarn to work with already. So that's why I pull out a tail to start. And you're going to begin round one with, you're going to begin round one with a chain 10. And as I know in the pattern, the first three rounds will just work up a regular oval. And then in the last two rounds, you'll see how we change the stitch sizes to alter the shape and turn the oval into a jelly bean shape. So before round one, chain 10. You want to put your slip knot onto your hook and whatever method you use for that is fine. Just get the slip knot right on there and then chain 10. So you're going to chain, you're going to yarn over and just pull through to create one chain. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and ten. To start round one, you're going to skip the first two chains. So skip this one and this one. And then in the third chain, you're going to work a half double crochet. And most of this pattern will be worked in half double crochet. So for the half double, you're going to yarn over and insert your hook into the desired stitch. Yarn over and pull through one yarn over and pull through two. You're going to work a total of seven half double crochet along this chain. So in the next chain you're going to work your next half double crochet. So I yarned over, I'm going to insert my hook into the desired stitch, yarn over and pull through one, yarn over and pull through all three. I think I might have said the word two instead of three on that first stitch. So again, you're just pulling through all three loops on the hook. I'll show you one more time just because I think I flubbed the first one. So in the next chain, yarn over first, insert your hook into the next stitch, yarn over, pull through one, yarn over, and pull through all three loops on the hook. So, so far I've worked three half double crochets and I'm going to work four more. That's one, two, three, and four. That means you should have one more chain left. And in this chain, we're going to work five half double crochets all in the same stitch. This is gonna help us create an end cap, I guess, to the oval. So we can flip over and work on the other side of this chain too. So I'm going to work one, and in the same stitch, two, and again, three, you can see how it's sort of flipping around here, four, and then five. That was all in that last stitch. And you can see how this hole is kind of opening up a little and we can deal with that later. You don't have to worry about it. I haven't really found a good solution. Um, I just live with it and then try to fix it later. It's no big deal. All right, so now we're working in the other side of the foundation chain and we're going to work six half double crochets evenly across. And when I say evenly across, I just mean work one stitch per stitch. So it's one half double crochet, two, three, four, five, and six. You should have one more space to work in. And in this last chain, we're going to work four half double crochets. So it's one, two, three, and four. And what this does is like the first half double crochet we worked in this round counts as the fifth one. So you can think of an oval as 
basically a rectangle with two semicircles on each end. So there is some symmetry here. There are five half double crochets on this end and a total of five on this end as well. So we're going to end round one by using a slip stitch into the beginning of the first half double crochet of the round and we're going to join. So slip stitch is insert your hook into the desired stitch, yarn over, and pull through both loops on the hook. That's the end of round one. And you should have 22 stitches all the way around. I would definitely count my stitches after each round, especially if you're a beginner, just to make sure you're not confusing yourself in the next round when the stitch count doesn't work out. So make sure and count those 22. So we're going to start round two. First with a chain two. One and two. And this chain two does count as the first half double crochet of round two. So you will be working in this later and also counting this as a stitch. What we're going to do is work our second stitch in what I call the same stitch as your chain two. So this confuses some people, but just so that I know that all of our stitches, yours and mine, are going to fall in the same place and help shape the jelly bean and the oval correctly, um, I wanted to make sure that we were all working in the same stitches, and that sounds really weird, but here's what I'm going to show you. So I'm going to yarn over to, pre to prepare for my half double crochet, and the next stitch actually looks like this stitch. Like it looks like you should work in this one. But what I really want you to do is work in what I call the same stitch as your chain two, which is, see it kind of looks like we worked our slip stitch from round one into this space, and then we chained two, and I want to work the same stitch here for my first half double crochet. Like so. So this counts as the first two stitches of round two. And then we're going to continue by working six half double crochet evenly. So go into the next free stitch and work your half double crochet. You can do that five more times. So that's two, three, four, five, and six. Then you're going to work two half double crochets in the next stitch five times. So that's going to be a total of 10 stitches here. So work one half double crochet here and then work a second one in the same stitch and do that five more times. Oops, sorry, four more times. Three. Now you're going to work six half double crochets evenly across again. It's one, two, three, four, five, and six. And then you're going to start increasing again. So you're going to work two half double crochets in the next four stitches. Two, three, and four. And finally, we're going to slip stitch to the top of our initial chain two to join the round. So slip stitch into this second chain up here. And that's the end of round two. You should have 32 stitches at the end of round two. Sorry about the dogs. <laughs> my neighbor's kids are playing basketball outside and my dogs are going crazy. Okay. For round three, this will be very similar to round two. Just with more stitches. So start round three with chain two. 
which does count as your first half double crochet again. And again, work your first half double crochet in that same stitch. You're going to work seven half double crochets evenly across. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and this is the motif that we're going to repeat at this point. You're going to work two half double crochets in the next stitch and then one half double crochet in the next stitch. You'll repeat that a total of five times here for a total of 15 stitches. So two half double crochets in the next stitch, one half double crochet in the following stitch, two in this next stitch, and then one in the following stitch. I just repeated where I just worked two motifs and I'm going to work three more. Here's one, two, and then three. And here we're going to work six half double crochets evenly across again. So one, two, three, four, five, and six. I'm going to complete round three by working my motif again, but only four times this time. So two half double crochets in the next stitch, and then one half double crochet in the following stitch. There's one, two, three, one of those like weird knots coming out of my yarn ball, which I saw someone call yarn barf one time and I'm like, that's really the perfect name for that. Okay. And I have one more motif. So two HDC in the next stitch and then one HDC in the following stitch and slip stitch to the top of the chain two to finish round three. At the end of round three, your oval looks like this. And you should have 42 stitches all the way around. Round four is where we're going to start giving that really jelly bean-ish shape to this oval. So the pattern's gonna seem a little weird and random, but trust the numbers, trust the pattern, and the jelly bean should turn out fine. Round four begins with chain two again, which does count as our first half double crochet. And again, we're going to work the first half double crochet in that same stitch. Work eight half double crochets evenly across. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. The mo motif that we'll be repeating four times, not five, just four, is two half double crochet in this next stitch and then one half double crochet in the next two. So here's two half double crochets in the first stitch and then two half double crochets evenly. I'm going to work that three more times. If you lose count <laughs> of how many motifs, you can always just look back and see where you put your increases. So I can see I have one increase here, one, two, three, four. After working that motif four times, you're going to work two half double crochets in the next stitch 
twice. So work two half double crochets in this next stitch and do it again. Two half double crochets in the following stitch. You're going to work one half double crochet in this next stitch and then one single crochet in the next stitch. And single crochet is insert your hook into the desired stitch, yarn over, pull through one, yarn over, and pull through two. So that creates a shorter stitch than half double crochet. You're going to now work eight slip stitches evenly. So that'll be one slip stitch each in the next eight stitches. Slip stitch is simply inserting your hook into the desired stitch, yarn over, and pull through both loops. Do not pull too tightly on these slip stitches because we need to be able to insert our hook into them for the next round. So try to use some control there and don't pull too tightly. Three, four, five, six, seven, and eight. Going to work single crochet, one single crochet in the next stitch, and then one half double crochet in the next stitch, two half double crochets in the next stitch, one, two, both in the same stitch, and then we're going to repeat our motif from earlier in the round two times. So the motif again is two half double crochets in the next stitch and then two half double crochets evenly. We're going to do that two times. So two half double crochets in the next stitch, two evenly, then two in the next stitch, and then two evenly. And to finish, slip stitch to the top of the chain two. At the end of round four, you should have 52 stitches. I'm dealing with my yarn barf again, but I just kind of wanted to show you how changing the height of your stitch can create shape. So we're like half double crochet, single crochet, slip stitch, single crochet, half double crochet. And that's what that looks like. So we're going to do one more round. This is round five. Again, we're going to begin with chain two, which does count as our first half double crochet. And again, work the first half double crochet in that same stitch. And then nine half double crochet evenly across. This is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and here our motif, which we will work five times, is two half double crochets in the next stitch, and then three half double crochets evenly, a total of five times, so that's a total of 25 stitches. So however you want to count that in your head, I count like every stitch and just remember that it's a five count. So one, two in the next stitch, three, four, five, and here's my second motif, two in this stitch, six, seven, and then eight, nine, ten. And then I start my motif again. 11 and 12 in this first stitch. And then evenly. 13, 14, 15, 16 and 17 in the next stitch. And 18, 19, 20. And then 21 and 22 in the next stitch, 23, 24, 25. 
So I'm going all the way around, working my motif five times. Here we're going to work two half double crochets in this next stitch. It's one, two, one half double crochet in the next stitch, one, one single crochet in the next stitch, one single crochet. This time we're working, sorry, this time we're working six slip stitches evenly. So one, two, three, four, five, oops, and six. Then you're going to work three single crochets evenly. So one single crochet each in the next three stitches. It's one, two, and three. One HDC, one half double crochet in the next stitch. And then we're going to repeat our five motif from earlier, but we're gonna repeat it two times only. So that motif was two half double crochets in this next stitch, and then three half double crochets evenly. Again, two half double crochets in the next stitch, one half double crochet each in the next three. Can you hear the kids yelling outside? I don't know if, I don't know if you guys can hear that, but it's driving my dogs bananas. And now I can hear the kids barking at my dogs. Neighbors are amazing. <laughs> Good thing we're almost done here. And that last stitch, you're just going to work one more half double crochet. And then to finish the jelly bean, slip stitch to the top of the chain two to join. And it just makes me feel better when I'm finishing the project. Instead of picking up one loop of the chain, I pick up two, just because I feel like it makes my edge a little more secure. And then you're going to break off, leaving yourself about 18 inches of yarn to play with. You're going to be using this tail to sew the jelly beans together later. So to break off, you just yarn over and pull that cut yarn tail all the way through. This is your long yarn tail that you're gonna save for sewing and the shorter one we're gonna weave in. So I flip mine over to the wrong side and I take, take your tapestry needle and thread this yarn tail through here and we're just going to tuck this in. Actually the holes that I was talking about earlier aren't that bad so I'm not gonna worry about them. I'm just gonna weave this yarn tail in. I mean, there's a bit of a hole, but it's not super bothering me. So all you have to do is you weave this tapestry needle kind of inside the stitches. And I would do that for a couple stitches like this. And you know that you're working inside the stitch when you can't see much of your needle popping out on the other side. So that's how you know that your yarn will also be traveling invisibly inside. And the trick to weaving in yarn tails is to change directions. That helps keep the yarn tails secure. So now I'm going to weave through to the next round and weave back in the opposite direction. Depending on what my piece looks like, depending on what I have to work with, I might only weave in two directions, but if you read instruction books, they'll usually tell you to try to do it at least three times. So I'm gonna do it three times, just to look like a good student. <laughs> but to be honest, I think two is okay. So trim that. Oops. My table is actually, it's an Ikea table. 
and it's starting to slant toward the middle. <laughs> so my crochet hooks always start rolling back toward the middle here. So sorry about that. So here's your jelly bean. You want to make a bunch of those in different colors. I wanted to talk about a couple ways you can sew your jelly beans together. Ultimately, whatever you do is going to be cute. There's no wrong way, but I just wanted to talk you through the process of how I sew mine together. So as you can see, I like changing the directions of every other jelly bean. So instead of just sewing the next one on like this, I like sewing it on like this. I just think it gives it a little bit of movement. It's kind of fun. But certainly if you sewed them all together like like this way, all facing the same direction, that would be just as cute. And another thing to think about is um, you can always have the next jelly bean you're sewing on being on top of the next one. Or you can alternate which ones are on top. <laughs> So you can, you can see, um, it looks like I messed up <laughs> on this end of the scarf. I mean, there are no mess ups in art. It's just sort of a deviation from the rest of the scarf. But here I have like the orange one is coming on top. Here the orange one is on top of the green one. And then the red one is on top of the orange one. And then the white one is underneath the red one. <laughs> It's kind of random, but I don't know. I, I feel like now over explaining this just makes things sound kind of confusing and stupid, but ideally what I wanted on my jelly bean scarf was for, you know, it to kind of um, alternate between this one's on the top, this one's on the bottom, this one's on the top, this one's on the bottom. Do you know what I'm saying? They kind of like, they change in that way. but. Whatever you do is going to be super cute, and I can't wait to see all the spins you guys put on your scarves. And one thing that I would suggest, though, is to make sure that the right side of your work is always on the same side of the scarf. I think that looks neater and more intentional, regardless of how you're orienting them or overlapping them. And the right side of your work is the side that's facing you while you're crocheting. So this is all the right side. And then the wrong side, or the WS, is the side that's facing away from you while you're working. And for half double crochet, I definitely do not prefer the aesthetic of the wrong side. So I make sure they're all facing the same way, and then if I wear this scarf, this side, the pretty side, is showing. So I feel like showing you how I sew these together is going to be a little weird too. And there's really, again, no wrong way to do it. I just sort of will talk you through why I do things a certain way. And by no means am I always right. It's just sort of, just sort of what I end up doing and how my brain ends up working. So I'm going to thread my needle through that long tail. Also to note, if you keep switching the orientation of your jelly beans, this long tail is not always going to be on the correct end of the jelly bean you want to sew. So you might sometimes be able to use this yarn tail, and sometimes you might have to cut a fresh piece of yarn. Because it's easier for me, whichever jelly bean is going to be on the top, I like to use that color for sewing. My brain just works that way. I try to make the stitching invisible so you can't see it on the front or the back, and that's just easier for my brain to understand if I use blue when it's the blue jelly bean on top. And like, for instance, on this orange jelly bean, I used orange to sew to the green jelly bean. So place this here. If it's hard for you to um, figure out how to keep all your jelly beans straight, you can use this center line from your foundation chain. This straight line, that's running through the center of all your jelly beans. So I just try to line those up. So what you'll do here is, t it's just a top stitch for me. So what I do is insert my needle 
Oh, also you can pin this together if it's easier for you, if you're worried that stuff will shift around. I'm too lazy to pin, but um, if it gives you more confidence to pin, like go ahead and use straight pins to pin this together first. So I go in and I, I insert my hook through the blue, and I only pick up like one or two stitches, one or two loops of green. I don't want my needle to go all the way through to the underside all the way through to the underside of the green because that means my blue yarn will show through and again I try to keep my stitching invisible and then come back up and that's one stitch I do it again insert my hook into the next blue stitch I peek under here and I just pick up like a little bit like one or two I just kind of dip dip into that green one but not all the way through and come back up. Do that again. Just pick up just a, just a loop or two of green. And come back up. I'm going to flip this over and show you. You can see there's no blue stitching showing through my green because my needle has never pierced through to the bottom. Does get a little floopy down here, so pins would probably be smart. <laughs> Let's see, pick up a couple loops of green, come back through. This part gets a little weird because, again, I don't want my stitches to show through. What I do is I, I'm kind of feeling with my left hand, like where the edge of the green is. Because it's kind of hard. Uh, I guess you could sort of do it this way if you sort of peek under here. I don't know, we can try that. So pick up just a couple loops of the green and kind of come back up and through the blue. I think it's weird coming back up because you can't really see what you're doing. Kind of, because I'm creating some stitching here at the bottom of the green one, which kind of dips into the top of the blue one. So generally what I would do is I just feel it like I'm feeling here, making sure that my needle doesn't pierce through and that I'm just traveling through the green and also that I'm just feeling like where this bottom edge of the green is. I don't know, see, <laughs> me talking through it I think is making it just sound really funky and however you figure out how to do it is fine. Like as long as these things are sewn together and your scarf is going to be great and there's no wrong way and you'll probably discover a better way to do it and this is just how I've been doing it and I get stuck in my ways and I'm just sitting you on this journey and you can complete it however you want. So I'm going to work one more stitch here and then we're just going to tie it off. So I'm going to tie a small knot into a stitch on the blue part and then again you're going to just weave that through and make sure to change directions at least one time. Also with weaving through don't pull on the yarn too much because you'll start scrunching up your project. I'm going to weave down into the next row so I can change directions for a couple stitches. And I'll do one more direction change just to be a good girl, even though I'm in real life I might not. If you're selling your items, you really do want to make sure that all your yarn tails are secure so they don't pop out and make your work look super ugly. That is my big beef with handmade crochet is for the yarn ends to be woven in properly so they don't pop out. There you go. I hope you guys had a super fun time making your 
adorable rainbow colored delicious jelly bean scarves. If you ever post pictures of your work on social media and you want me to see it, please feel free to tag me on Facebook if you just post directly on my Facebook page. That's pretty much the easiest way for me to see something. If you're posting on Instagram, if you physically tag me, like not just hashtag Twinkie Chin, which you can also do as well, but if you physically like tag my name onto your picture, it's really easy for me to pull up those images and find them. For the heart-shaped donut pattern, I was able to see tons of your guys' projects, which was super cool. At some point, I put together a collage of some of the ones that I really liked and posted on Instagram. So I love sharing your work too. So if you make it easy for me to find it, then I can put together more of these fun group collages. If you have any suggestions, comments, questions, please feel free to leave them below or you can get me at Facebook or Instagram or Twitter. If you're looking for another fun Easter themed crochet project, I have another awesome tutorial here on YouTube. That's for the chocolate Easter bunny. I will be cooking up our next video project very soon, and I hope you guys will take care until then. Bye!